So I'm all about the NES, but one thing I've kind of veered away from with this channel is the unlicensed games. There's a few okay ones made by Tengen or Comerica, but most of them are just abysmal, poorly programmed, and poorly produced titles that barely hold up to 30 seconds of gameplay. It just feels like they're too easy targets for ridicule, like judging a child's artwork based on its ability to convey realism. But recently, while working on the Legend of Zelda clones video, I was playing all these official games and thought, hey, let's throw in spiritual warfare in there too. It's a Zelda knockoff for sure. And I'm glad I did. Not just because it clearly meets the criteria of that video, but also because it kind of rules. Let's start with the cover. Speaking of children's artwork, this looks straight out of the notebook of a 13-year-old D&D enthusiast who doesn't understand how armor works. Just damn, dude. Looking like Chun-Li out here with these monster thighs. Also, I love the title Spiritual Warfare. Like I know this is a Christian game, but that shit sounds super metal. So the gameplay. You wander around this huge map looking for particular items in order to progress. As you can see, Spiritual Warfare is heavily influenced by Legend of Zelda. Everything from the top-down perspective, the heart health meter, the A and B item select options, and the mini screen with map. You even have bombs that can reveal hidden rooms, but here the bombs are called Vials of God's Wrath. Fuck, that is epic. And also, kinda underwhelming. Like, I'd expect God's Wrath to be the Great Flood or the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, big, massive disasters. This is more like God's mild inconvenience. You can battle all the street tough bad guys by throwing fruit at them, which is something I highly recommend you try in real life. Since it's a Bible game, you don't just kill them, you convert them, and they seem to repent their sins before ascending to heaven. Isn't that nice? Occasionally a demon pops out, like not so fast, but you can blast him into oblivion without worrying about saving his soul. Get behind me, Satan! The enemy drops doves, which are the currency of spiritual warfare, and you can use this to buy different chuckable fruits and a few other items. There's also occasionally these angels that pop down from heaven to ask you Bible questions in exchange for dove dollars. Even if you're clueless about Christian scripture, most of these pretty obviously lead you to the correct answer. My favorite thing about spiritual warfare is all the little nuanced details, and not just seeing them in the game, but also imagining the religious conservative programmers really putting a lot of thought into what they want to include here. Like this bar. The little girl hanging in the adjacent alley tells you to avoid bars, and after you quickly pelt all the drunken sinners, you think, well, that's probably just because there's a big boss fight in there. Nope, it was actually a test of your moral fortitude. You absolutely need the belt of truth to progress, so now you've got to trek on over to the slums and buy it back from a pawn shop. That's so awesome. Speaking of the slums, check out this hardcore gang shootout you've got to waltz through. Gritty. Or in the suburbs, um, what was this guy's crime? Wall Street banker? 99% of the people you encounter are enemies, so you're always kind of caught off guard when someone isn't trying to attack you, but fuck it. Fruit first and ask questions later. <laughs> Check it out, it's a Hare Krishna at the airport. That rules. These are my favorite enemies, graffiti writers, just painting giant blocks of color on the sleepy suburban sidewalks. Hell yeah. The one I've really been trying to figure out is this kid playing basketball. As far as I can tell, you can't get to him, so he's just here for scenery? I don't know. Looks like he's having fun. I'm jealous. So yeah, there's lots of silly details to be mined here. Mostly though, this is a surprisingly great exploration action game, especially considering its proselytizing intention. The gameplay is pretty simplistic, both in combat and in exploration, and the enemy AI is pretty easy, as they mostly just run back and forth in front of you. So yeah, there's not a ton of challenge to spiritual warfare. The graphics are as bottom of the barrel as they get, and the music is just an atrocious kindergarten level loop. But I just muted it after a while, and unironically threw on Slayers South of Heaven. I say try it. It makes the game feel way more fast paced and exciting. I wouldn't recommend Spiritual Warfare over much better Zelda clones like Crystalis or Magic of Scheherazade, but I would absolutely rather play this than similar titles like Fester's Quest or Deadly Towers. It's exactly what you expect from a Bible version of Legend of Zelda, but it absolutely offers way more than I would have guessed from this cover. Check it out. 
Thank you.